Hey everybody, Lee Frazier here, Maya Technical Specialist for Autodesk, and I want to take a look in this video at Maya's Color Composite node. It's a simple node that just allows you to do exactly what it says, composite colors over top of each other, and those colors can be driven by textures or images, and you can use a layer operation or this factor value to drive the differences between those and what you see in the viewport. So the effect we're going to try to achieve is something that was shared with me by Igor Zanik, who does some really cool effects work with Bifrost and, and Boss. And you can see the look of this ocean surface here. There's different currents and wind speeds and ocean depths and things that drive the look of this ocean. And it kind of breaks up the surface and kind of gives it a little more realistic look, obviously because this is an image, but this is what we want to replicate. Here's another example where you can see a really distinct difference between the wave pattern close to the shore and the wave pattern a little bit further away. So we can do that really easily. Let's go ahead and start up our Arnold render view. And you can see I've just got a simple scene here with a little makeshift island and a really calm surface that has a default Arnold AI standard surface to it. And that surface has just the deep ocean shader preset assigned to it. I've also assigned the color composite node to a displacement shader. And so we can see what that displacement looks like from these two boss spectral wave cache outputs. All I have to do is drag the out color into color A and you can see the result of that displacement. If I disconnect that and drag the color from the second displacement, you can see I've created two that have two very distinct looks from each other. And one is a little bit more, uh, one, of, one is a little larger than the other. And what I want to do is drive sort of that pattern difference between the two. So to do that, I need to create another texture that will drive that difference. Let's go ahead and hook up the to, to color A and color B. So now we only see the result of color A, but we're going to create another texture and drive that factor value. And that's going to show or reveal that texture underneath. So we'll go ahead and stop that. And I'm going to open up my layer editor. And I've got a piece of geometry here. And I'm just simply going to use Maya's 3D paint tool. I'm going to right mouse button click on the surface. I've just got a simple Lambert assigned to this. I'm going to go to my 3D paint tool. And you can see I've already selected red as the color. Now, when I hold my brush cursor over top of the geometry, you can see I have a big red X. And that's because I haven't assigned the texture to it. So I'm going to click on that button here. It'll bring up a little dialog box. I'll just assign a 2K texture to it. It's just, this allows me to pick an image format. We'll just pick JPEG and I'll assign that value to it. And right away, I have the freedom now to paint on this surface. Just to make this really obvious, I'm going to paint just a big red dot right on the front of the geometry there. So I'll go ahead and hide that. We'll close out our tool settings and adjust the camera one more time. You can see it placed that texture right inside the hypershade for me. And I'm going to take my out color. I'm going to take that red value. That's the only value we're interested in to drive that factor. And I'm going to open up my render view one more time. We'll hit play. And just like that, you can very clearly see where that red value reveals the look of that second texture underneath. Now we could use another shading node to vary that. Obviously we could go in and, and paint the texture in Photoshop or we could paint it uh, a little more detailed so that we can create a look. Maybe we want to create something along the, the cove here. Painting directly inside of Maya makes it kind of nice because we can position that texture exactly where we need it. But in general, this is a really easy tool to use in an interesting way to create a little more realism inside the scene using Boss, as well as that color composite node. Hopefully this gives you some ideas on some ways that you can use the color composite node. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.